God is patient with us and he's forgiving. And he wants us to see his goodness, not his displeasure. He wants us to walk in his love not his, and not in fear. And God knows that there's no way, there's no way we can be healed if we believe that he sent it. There's no way. Because even if I pray for you and I'm like, God wants you to be healed in your heart, you're going to be like, God wanted me to have it. So if God wanted me to have it, then why am I going to be healed? And God knows if we believe this stupid lie that we're not going to receive the healing that he wants us to walk in. And God knows that if, that if we have more fear, if he uses fear to get us to come to him, we're just going to become more afraid, not safe. We're not going to trust him. We're going to be more afraid of him. And God will never, 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 never do this. He would never, ever use fear to try and bring you closer to him. Preachers might. <laughs> Preachers might do that. They might try to fear you into to living a certain way, to acting a certain way, to doing a certain thing. Parents might, <laughs> as a means of discipline, but God never will. He knows, he knows, he knows that we will never come out of hiding. We will never come out from the bush if we're afraid of him. Why, do you, why, do you, why would you come outside and expose yourself if you're afraid? Why would you come outside and, and be vulnerable if you're afraid? Why would you come out and open up your heart if you're afraid? Why would you do that? Why would God work this and instrument this whole thing for you to be afraid so that you wouldn't come to him? We would never come out of hiding. And we would never come to him because in our heart we'd be like, oh no, something worse might happen because I'm already a mess. And I'm coming to this God who's probably going to make me more of a mess. And so we don't come to him. But that is not God's heart for us. His heart is that we would come to him. His heart is that we would run to him. In the times when it hurts, that we would run to him. In the times where we're discouraged, we would run to him. In the time when we're afraid, we would run to him. In the times where it doesn't make sense, we would run to him. In the times where we're feeling weak, we would run to him. He wants us to always run to him. Not be afraid of him. <clears throat> when Jesus was on the earth, he never used fear. You look at his whole life as he walked amongst the earth, as he interacted with people, he never used fear tactics. He never tried to get people to be so afraid that they have to come into the kingdom. <laughs> Salvation by coercion. <laughs> it doesn't happen. Jesus never did that. When Jesus was on the earth, he preached hope, he preached peace, he preached love, he preached restoration, he preached freedom. He talked about the love of a good father who wanted only to bless his children. He demonstrated the love of God everywhere he went, and he used the Holy Spirit to convince people that God was a good God and that he loved them and he was for them. God is a good God. He's not mad at you today, church. He's not mad at you. He's not mad at you. He's not disappointed. He doesn't think that you're the biggest mess up of all time. He just loves you. He just loves you so much. He loves you. You know, when, when Jesus was on the earth, he healed the sick and he raised the dead and he opened the eyes of the blind and he did all of these amazing miracles and all of these things are available to us today because we're supposed to do what Jesus did. And so through the Holy Spirit, we can walk in all of these amazing gifts. We can raise the dead and heal the sick and see blind eyes open and see deaf ears pop open and people hear. We can bring reconciliation to families. We can give prophetic direction to the hopeless. Oh my goodness, can you imagine that prophetic word that comes in the moment of your need where all of a sudden you see God knows exactly what's happening and he's just read your mail he's like listen I am with you I'm going to help you you're not alone you have me prophetic words to bring people out of hopeless situations you see when 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 we experience things like what we just experienced these are all 
signs of God's love for us. These are all demonstrations of how much he loves us, how much he wants us to be free, and he wants us to be whole, and he wants us to walk in, in a good life and in a healed body. These are all signs of what he wants for us. When we walk in these things, not only will we have an understanding of the goodness of God, but then we can demonstrate to others how much God loves them. And they too can come out of hiding and run out of the bush and no longer feel like they have to cover themselves, but they can be free and real in God. See, when, when people hide from God, it's a sign that they've been blinded from his love. They don't really understand it. When you hide from God, you don't really understand how much he loves you. Because if you knew that there was just pure love, no judgment, no anger, if there was just pure love waiting for you, why wouldn't you run? People don't run because they don't understand. They don't have a right view of God. They don't understand his love. There was a story in, in Luke 15, and we all know it well, the story about the prodigal son and how he, he left his father's home and he went out and did all this crazy stuff. He was engaged in riotous living, the Bible says. <laughs> and then he comes to this moment where he realizes in verse 17 that, oh my gosh, you know what? In my father's house, even the servants live good. Like in my father's house, even the servants have food. They have clothes. They have shoes on their feet. They have a nice place to sleep. Like what am I doing? In my father's house, there is safety. And here I am, and I'm starving to death. But in my father's house, the servants have everything. And so the prodigal son realized in that moment that the love, he realized the love of his father in that moment, and he remembered how his father treated the other people that were in their home. He remembered. And when the world sees the goodness of God, when they see it unfold in our lives, when they see all of the amazing things that God is doing for us, they will then realize how good this God is and how much he loves them too. And they too will then come out from hiding. And they too will be like, oh, this God is not angry? Wait, 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 wait a minute. You mean like I can just come to him like just like this? Like in all of my mess, I can just come to him? Yes. You mean that he'll just love me no matter what? Yes. You mean that he'll just love me even though like I was at a club last night? Yes. Do you mean that he'll love me even though like I cussed this guy off on the way to, on the way to church this morning? Yes. Do you mean that he'll just love me no matter what? Yes. Yes. Yes, he will love you no matter what. Yes, he loves you no matter what. And when people see that in our lives, they too will realize that God loves them. Jesus said in John 14, 9, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Do you see what I do? I walk around and I love people. I, I walk in compassion. I feed people. I heal them. I free them. I save them. You see me, you see God. That's what God wants to do for you. When we look at Jesus, we see God's love for us because Jesus is the ultimate expression of that. We got to stop looking at all the other people, guys. <laughs> all the prophets that are on TV and the evangelists and the, all the people on Facebook who are giving you a word and you're scrolling through. Well, stop, stop, stop. I got a word for you. You got no nothing for me. <laughs> We got to stop listening to all these people who want little fire. They're just, they're, they're speaking out of their emotion. They're speaking out of their judgment. They're speaking out of so many things, but it's not the love of God. And we need to stop allowing these words to impact our life and these people to have a say in what God is doing. They don't have a say. They don't have a word. They don't have a right. It's between you and God. We need to stop looking at people who are going to discourage us, mislead us, and misinform us because it leaves us in a place of fear, not love. It leaves us in a place of doubt, not hope. Jesus never gave sickness to anybody. He never did in all of his years that he walked on the earth. Did you ever see him make anybody sick? Did you ever see him say, hey, you man, look, look, you look too healthy. You're, you're too strong. You're a big, young, strapping guy. No, no, no. I, you need a lesson. 
You need, you need to learn to get closer to me. Come here, let me give you some cancer. Come here, let me give you some leprosy. Come here, boy, you're too, look, you look too good. Come here, let me do something to your face. Jesus never did that. And Jesus is the body, embodiment of God on the earth. If Jesus never did it, why would God do it to us? He never hurt anybody. He never pushed anybody away. He loved everyone. He made a way for everyone who was willing to accept it. He never did it. He was full of compassion. And he said, man, I love you. That's why I'm here. I love you. I love you. That's why I'm walking on these streets. I love you. I could have been in heaven. I could have been sitting at the big, nice, fancy throne. But here I am. I'm walking these streets for you. I'm carrying this cross for you. I'm carrying the weight of the world for you. I'm carrying all of the sickness, all of the disease, all of the hurt. I'm carrying it all for you because I love you. I love you. He loves you. He bled for you so much, he loves you. He died for you so much, he loves you. And if you've seen Jesus, then you have seen the Father. If you've seen Jesus, then you see God's love for you. Everything that Jesus did, it was to save us, to deliver us, to heal us, to free us, to provide for us, to empower us, to move us into the next place, to shift us into our destiny. Everything that Jesus did for us was for us to step into the kingdom. Everything that Jesus did for us is so that we would walk this earth in peace, in help, in health, in love, in freedom, in hope, in joy. Everything that Jesus did for us was so that we would walk and live in the kingdom. Everything. Everything he did. And if we have seen Jesus, we have seen the Father. God is no different. He wants the same things. The deception in, in Adam, it was so deep. From that one fruit, <laughs> it was so deep that suddenly he was so afraid and so ashamed Shame made him cover himself. He was embarrassed. All of a sudden, everything that he was experiencing was coming out of fear, not out of love. And there's so many times when, when we, act, we react to things around us because of, we're afraid. We react to things and we respond to, to people and we respond to situations and we respond to our families and, and, and our coworkers and, and anybody who's around us. We respond in a way because we're driven by fear and so our responses end up being destructive or conflicting or they end up being more harmful than good or they end up hurting or they end up isolating us because all of a sudden we're walking in fear and we can't see love. And so our reactions... And our responses, if they're not stem from, if they don't stem from love, they stem from fear. And this is what's happening with the ten spies. We're looking back at numbers. They were looking from fear because all of a sudden they thought in themselves they were incapable of receiving what God said he was going to do. See, we can look at, at sickness through the lens of fear or through the love that God has for us. If we look at it from fear, then sickness will be detrimental. If we look at it from fear, then sickness means we're in the hospital. If we look at it from fear, then sickness means I have no hope. If we look at it from fear, then sickness means, oh no, I've got like limited time left in my life. If we look at it from fear, we die. <laughs> but if you look at it from the lens of love, then you realize Jesus has already made the way. He's paid the price for every single healing that I need. I just need to come to Jesus. I just need to get my healing by faith because Jesus has already paid for it. It's already here. It's here. I don't got to work for it. I just got to receive it. If we look at our lack through the lens of fear, then we're never going to have we're always going to be month to month. We're never going to have enough money. We're always going to have more month. We're never going to have enough food. We're always going to be going to a food bank. We're never going to have enough clothes. We're always going to have to go to Salvation Army. Like if we look at, at, at loss or if we look at, at the need for things through the lens of fear, then we're never going to have. 
But if you look at it from love, my bills are paid. I'm walking in abundance. Actually, part of the kingdom is provision, prosperity. So you know what? I'm going to prosper. Everything around me is going to prosper. My job's going to prosper. My family's going to prosper. My life is going to prosper. My marriage is going to prosper because there's no loss in my life. There's only love. And in love, there's only provision. When you don't see the giants in your way and you just look at everything through the love of God, all you see is victory. When you don't look at what's standing in front of you, when you don't listen to what the doctors got to say. I love doctors. They're amazing. They're smart. But they don't have the final say when it comes to a child of God. So if you stand there, you'd be like, thank you, doctor. I heard what you said, but I don't believe it. You know, when you look at your bank book, you're like, oh, I don't believe it. I, I, I serve a God that provides. I serve a God of prosperity. He's going to provide for me. See, when we look at things through the lens of love, we realize that there is provision and victory that we could never earn on our own. We can never do it on our own. We can never earn it. It's all just grace and it's all just love. I want to encourage you today, guys. Look at everything in your life through the lens of love. Look at everything in your life from the heart of a father who loves you. He loved you when you didn't even know him. He loved you when you were still a sinner. He loved you so much he sent Jesus. You didn't even know him. You weren't paying attention to him. You didn't have any thoughts about him. You probably didn't even acknowledge him. Maybe you use his name in a way that you shouldn't. But even though... Even before you knew anything about him, he loved you. And he made a way for you. He loved you even before you were born. The Bible says that when you were in your mother's womb, before then even, God knew you. He knew what your life would be like. He knew what you would look like. He knew what you would sound like. He had this amazing plan already set for you. He said, that's my daughter. That's my son. This is what they're going to do. They're going to come on this earth, and they're going to do this, and I'm going to give them this, and they're going to have an amazing life. He already set the plan for you. He loved you before you even knew him. Before you even knew him. If he loved you that much then, how could he love you less now? If he loved you that much before you even said yes to him, how can he love you any less now? Why would this amazing God go through all this trouble to make a way for you, to have you come into the kingdom, and then he makes it hard for you? That's not him. He doesn't love you any less. And he would never, ever turn away from you. And you see, with Adam, if he had just turned to God in that moment when he was afraid, instead of trying to run and hide from God, the outcome would have been different. And today, friends, I want to tell you, it doesn't matter what you're experiencing. It doesn't matter what's happening in your life. It doesn't matter what, 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 you're, what you're feeling. I want to tell you today, if you come to God, he loves you and he will help you. He's already made the way for you. Would you stand with me today? Oh my goodness, I've never felt so loved in my life. I hope this transcends to my house. <laughs> my goodness, you know, as we sat and we discussed this message at home, and, and we often do almost every message that is preached in this house, we, we participate in it together. For us, it's communion. Uh, there's never been a message really preached here that you and I didn't discuss or, or oversaw. So if you're thinking that I'm a novice or she's a novice. No, we, God spoke to us about every message we've ever preached. We are, not a, we are not a lone ranger in this church. We work together. We have the same heart for God. We have the same love for God and we have the same love for you. <laughs> so overwhelmed, guys. He just loves you so much. It's funny how she would cry because that's how I feel. And it's... Uh... We really need to walk from his love, not anything else. We, 
We just need to know every moment, every day, every hour that he just loves us. He just loves us. And whatever it is that you're dealing with today, he wants to move you out of it. Whatever it is that you're experiencing today, he wants to free you from it because he loves you. It's just his love. It's just his love. He doesn't want you to hurt. He doesn't want you to be sick. He doesn't want you to be afraid. He doesn't want you to be disappointed. He just wants you to feel loved, to feel his embrace, to know that you are the greatest thing to him. You are the apple of his eye, the joy of his life. He loves you, church. He loves you. He loves you so much. He loves you. He loves you today. Because of his love, he went to the cross and died for you. Because of his love, because of his love this morning, he gives you the offer to surrender your life to him so that he can take over the wheels and drive. You got to give him a chance. I promise you, your life will never be the same. This is not religion. This has nothing to do with religion. Religious people are fakes. And they make you work for it. And they make you work for it. They make you beg for it. You don't have to beg. Jesus did all the work for you. Jesus did everything on that cross. And as your faith grows in that relationship, as my faith grew in our love for each other, as your faith grew in me, we began to work better together. And so it will be with you as you put your faith in Jesus, as you trust him with your heart, and as you surrender. He will then take you, and you and him will work together, and you will become prosperous. You will become blessed, healed, delivered. There are many things that God offers you if you just partner with him this morning. And, and this is why we don't teach religion here. We just want you to put your trust again in Jesus. And, and if you failed, and if you walked away, don't worry. You didn't really walk away. That's Old Testament garbage backsliding you didn't backslide stupidness <laughs> say we're we are we're on we're in jesus nobody can slide out of jesus <laughs> okay I'm, I'm sad it's stupidness that the church's teaching I, i'm so vexed you don't know but <laughs> anyways um I, my point is this and my heart is this for you I, I just want you to give your life to him and trust him where you're at right now is not where you're going to be this guy knows how to drive he does. This guy knows how to th make things grow. How to change things. He, he, does. he does. He does. This guy knows how to, how, to, how to heal bodies. This guy knows how to walk on water. Yeah. This guy knows how to do everything, church. And if you can trust him this morning, if you can dear put your trust in God, I believe in your love for me. I trust in that love for me. And I surrender my life to that love. If you're married here this morning, you understand that concept. I had to surrender to this love and I had to trust her that in, 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 in her life, the, because she loves me, her best interest is towards me. She has good intentions. So when I became married, when I came into the relationship with Christine, I knew that her love for me will make me better. When you come into the relationship with Jesus, you have to know that his love for you will make you better. It will never make you worse. He will never give you sicknesses. He will never call all these things that preachers are lying to you about. It's fake. Run. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. You don't have to go down to get up. Love doesn't do that. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love never fails. It doesn't hurt each other. It doesn't abandon you. It doesn't put cancer on you. <laughs> It doesn't make you broke. Sheesh, if that was love, like what the heck is the enemy? <laughs> Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I want to make, a, I want to make a, an altar call, but I want to make an altar call for your heart, not an altar call for your body. And I, I just want you, Simeon, I just want you to close your eyes, and I just want you to lift your hands as high as you can reach. And if you want to tippy toe, it's okay. And I just want you to say, Lord, I surrender. I surrender to your love and your love has, the, has a perfect plan for my life. And your love has a perfect, perfect will for my life. Your love has healing. Your love has kindness. Your love has forgiveness. Your love, Jesus, has, has prosperity. It has peace. Just lift your hands as high as you could and tell him, Lord, I surrender to your love this morning. I don't, I'm coming out of the bush. I'm coming out of this bush. I'm tired of hiding. 
I surrender. I surrender my life to you, Jesus. I want to give you full control. I want you to take me where you want me. I want you to do, and I know that you want me to be blessed, and I know you want me to be happy, and I know you want me to be at peace, and I know you have my best interest at heart, and I know that you have my children in your heart. I know you have my family, my business my, in your heart. I know everything. When I surrender my life, everything that pertains to my life, you are going to make it better. I'm not going to be like Adam. I'm not going to hide my love for you. I'm not going to hide from your Lord. I'm coming out of the bush. I'm coming out of the bush this morning. I'm coming to love. I'm coming home, Lord. I'm coming to love. Oh, thank you. I'm coming to love. I'm coming to love. Love that frees me. Love that cares for me. Love that will lift me. Love that will lift me. I'm coming to love. That's what you're coming to this morning, my friend. You're coming to a Jesus that loves you. And will take care of you. And will never leave you. Nor forsake you. When you prayed that prayer, say thank you, my precious, precious Jesus. Thank you, my precious Jesus. Thank you, my precious Jesus. And when you've prayed that prayer, would you do me a favor and hug somebody beside you? And if you know them really well, hug them tightly. <laughs> Just hug them. Amazing, 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 absolutely amazing.